Do you want to learn how to install Bootstrap into your Rails 6 application? Then stick around to find out how. I'm Thomas with Brainchest Digital. I'm a full stack developer obsessed with learning. If you're interested in learning full stack web development, please consider subscribing below. In this AWS Rails tutorial, we're going to walk through how to install Bootstrap via Yarn and Webpacker. Originally in our AWS Rails application, we installed Bootstrap via the CDN links so we could just kind of get off the ground running. But that's not really the best approach. So we're going to rip that out and we're going to install it via Yarn and Webpack. Don't worry, I'll walk you through all the steps to get this complete. As always, we're going to be working on our AWS Rails application. If you haven't seen that application yet, basically I just walk through various Amazon Web Services and Ruby on Rails tutorials by example through this application. So I'll link that playlist here in the cards and then down below in the description. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the AWS Rails bootstrap installation via Yarn and Webpacker tutorial. We have our AWS Rails app loaded locally on our machine. So the first thing we're going to do is remove the hard-coded CDN bootstrap links. We're not going to want to rely on these. We'd rather have Bootstrap within our own application as opposed to relying on this external resource. Chances are their CDN will never go down, but if it ever did, that would also take our website down. So we're just gonna go ahead and delete that now in the application.html.erb. Next, I know that we have one more included in the shared footer. So if we click into shared footer, we can grab the JavaScript links. We'll save that. If we reload, you can see everything's kind of messed up now as a result. So we no longer have our styles in JavaScript for Bootstrap included anymore. So let's go ahead and fix that now. So here in our terminal, we're going to run the yarn command to add Bootstrap. Typically, you'd run yarn add Bootstrap, jQuery, and Popper.js. Since we added jQuery in the previous tutorial, we're going to remove that here. But you're going to want to leave that in if you don't already have jQuery in your project. Next, we're going to go ahead and update our Webpacker config. So in config, Webpack, environment, we're going to move this export line down, and then clean up our plugin. Now that we've got Webpack configured, let's go ahead and import Bootstrap. In app assets style sheets, we're going to change application.css and rename this to application.scss. Once you make this change to scss, you can no longer use the require tree and require self commands. So we need to import each file specifically. We'll also import the Bootstrap file. So instead, we're going to go ahead and just Bootstrap along with all the rest of these files. Now that we've switched application to an SCSS file, you have to explicitly import every style sheet file. Unlike previously, if you were just using the .css extension with the require tree command. So it's just something to note if you end up writing some styles and you don't see them, just remember to check back here and ensure that you've imported the file. Now we're going to jump over to the JavaScript and import bootstrap there as well. So in app JavaScript packs, application in JS. We'll go ahead and import Bootstrap here as well. If we flip back over to our browser and refresh our page, you can see we've got Bootstrap up and running. I just want to interrupt for one second and see if you're finding value. Please subscribe below, hit the like button, turn on the bell notification for, for future notifications of, of content like this. And if you are, we have a limited time offer. Our coworker here, Bear, will perform one trick per subscriber. Yes. Down. Yes. Roll over. Good boy. You're the goodest boy. Good boy. Down. Down. Oh my gosh. We're going viral, bear. If you run get status, you can see all the files we have changed. Let's go ahead and create a branch. Next, we'll add our files. And we're going to go ahead and commit with a message. Then we'll push this up to GitHub. This is the point in our process where if you worked with a team, you would create a pull request in GitHub and then wait for a fellow teammate to review. In an effort to keep things moving, we're just going to go ahead and merge this branch and then deploy.
Now that our application's finished deploying, let's go over to the web browser and load up the AWS Rails application. As you can see, everything's still up as we expect, but now we're using Webpack and our own local versions of the Bootstrap, CSS, and JavaScript files as opposed to relying on the CDN. As always, please don't forget to like and subscribe if this video was helpful for you, and leave some questions in the comment section below, and I'll catch you in the next ABS Rails tutorial.